Hi there, I'm Stephen Chu, and this is another episode on the Cognitive Challenges of Effective Teaching, a video series created by Bill Servin and myself. In this video, I'm going to talk about two challenges that are related to each other. The first one is student mental mindset, and the second one is student fear and mistrust. So let's start with an example of how you might see these challenges in the classroom. Let's say you're teaching a course, a uh, uh, first year uh, uh, general education course that everyone has to take. A good example of that is writing and composition. So you tell the students, welcome uh, to writing and composition uh, 101. And of course, you hope that the students are going to respond in the following way. Well, you know, writing is so important to my career. You know, this is a chance for me to work hard and improve my writing. That would be ideal, but that doesn't always happen. Students come to our courses with very different attitudes and, and beliefs and expectations about courses. So a person might say, I'm no good at writing. I hate writing. So they believe that they have no talent in writing. There's nothing they can do to improve their writing. And this is just going to be an experience uh, full of frustration for them because they don't have the talent and ability to improve their writing. Another uh, person might say this class is a waste of time. They don't understand why they have to take this course. They're not interested in the course. They don't see how it relates to their career plans. So uh, they're already uh, thinking that this is just going to be a waste of time and they're not going to invest effort into the course. And another person might be thinking, this is where they weed out students. So this is one of those courses where they weed out students who don't belong here, uh, students who don't already have the background that they're, they're looking for. So this student is, is very uh, uh, mistrustful of, of the professor, of what the professor's motives are. The student looks at this course uh, not as a chance to improve writing, but as a chance to sort of identify and weed out the undesirable students. All of these uh, reactions have to do with student mental mindset and student fear and mistrust. So let's take each one uh, in turn, starting with student mental mindset. So student mental mindset uh, refers to all the student attitudes and beliefs about a course or a topic. So when they come into your course, they have certain attitudes about it, expectations about it, and beliefs about the, the course. So will they enjoy the course? Have they enjoyed uh, similar courses before? Um, is the course going to be valuable? How useful is this for achieving the student's uh, goals? And then what's very important is their uh, expectations about their ability to succeed or do well in the course. Are they looking to really excel and make a top grade? Or are they just looking to get by with the minimal amount of effort? All these have to do with student mental mindset. Now, the most of the, uh, the most identifiable work on student mental mindset has been done by Carol Dweck, looking at growth versus fixed mindset. Uh, in Dweck's uh, framework, uh, there are two uh, different uh, basic mindsets. Um, people always have a mix of one or the other, uh, but they uh, are dominant in one versus the other, uh, and, although it can vary by, by topic area. So one of these is a growth mindset where you believe that your talent, your ability can be developed uh, through your own hard work or through proper strategies uh, or through guidance and feedback from, uh, from others. But you believe that ability is malleable and it can grow with sufficient and correct kind of effort. Now, uh, contrary to that is fixed mindset, belief that talents are innate gifts. In other words, you are born with a certain talent. That talent is not changeable. You can't increase that talent. Uh, by uh, your own effort and, and hard work. And Dweck has done a lot of work showing that growth mindset uh, is, is far more productive than fixed mindset. Uh, people with fixed mindset tend to avoid challenges because if they fail, uh, there's nothing they can do to succeed. They tend to take criticism personally, um, and they tend to be threatened by the success of others, whereas people with a growth mindset see challenging work as a, as a personal challenge, a, a, a way to, to get better. They see criticism as being useful, and they are inspired by the, the success of, of others. Now, a lot, have been, a lot of, uh, has been written about growth and fixed mindset. You can find a ton of, of this uh, on, uh, on the web. Um, what's strange about growth mindset is, is after Dweck introduced it, it kind of went through this, this buzzword uh, phase, uh, which was not of Dweck's making. It kind of became seen, it, it, people came to see it as, as uh, some sort of silver bullet, like it was, it was going, or a magic bullet. It was going to revolutionize uh, teaching. 
this is often the case uh, in, in education where it was sort of became a fad, uh, although Dweck never really meant it to be. And then when it turned out it wasn't the magic bullet, people sort of dismissed it. But what Dweck's uh, research and, and those of her colleagues have shown is that uh, growth versus fixed mindset can be useful in certain situations with certain kinds of, of students. So uh, it's valuable, uh, but it's not uh, a, a magic bullet. It was never really meant to be. Now, <clears throat> mindset actually goes beyond uh, growth versus fixed mindset. We can also look at it more broadly. Uh, some work by Farrington and colleagues has, has uh, uh, reviewed the literature and they have found these four beliefs are related to a productive, successful mindset. Uh, they bring about productive persistence where students are willing to work hard, even in the face of challenges and setbacks. So these are the four basic beliefs that Farrington has identified. I belong in this academic community. My ability and competence grow with my effort. I can succeed at this or in this course, and this work has value, uh, value for me. So we can uh, translate this into psychological concepts uh, I belong in this academic community is belongingness. Uh, a person needs to see themselves as a recognized member of a community, whether that be in a particular class or on a particular campus. They need to see themselves as being a member of a community uh, in full standing. Okay, so that's belongingness. Then my ability and competence grow with my effort. That is growth mindset, which we've just uh, talked about. And then I can succeed at this. Psychologists would call this academic self-efficacy, where you believe that through your own efforts, you can succeed at a particular course. This is related to growth mindset, but this has to do uh, with a particular challenge or a particular assignment or, or course here that you have this, the um, uh, ability to succeed at this particular, um, uh, this particular challenge. And then finally, this work is value for me. They see this, uh, this uh, uh, course as being important to their uh, long-term goals. They have to see the work as, as having value. And this is something that faculty often overlook because we already believe that our fields are important. We forget that students don't necessarily share that same, that same belief. All right, so how do we do, deal with student mental mindset? Um, we should be transparent uh, in the goals as uh, we assign work. Uh, students may see it as busy work, so we need to explain what the goal of, of uh, this assignment might be, how it relates to the goals, the course, and the value of the work, what it, uh, students will get out of it, what it will help them uh, to, uh, to do, be able to do, what skills the, they'll be able to get out of it. Okay. They should, you should structure feedback, especially in introductory courses where students are getting, uh, have, have different kind of structure of, of like sub goals to accomplish. So they will get a sense of efficacy uh, and the feedback should be constructive so that uh, it helps them to improve and get better. And then promote productive persistence by promoting belongingness, making sure that everyone feels included uh, in the course. Uh, everyone has a chance to contribute. Uh, contributing that or uh, promoting a growth mindset, uh, promoting uh, effort, and uh, especially if it's a constructive effort, uh, promoting acting self-efficacy, especially uh, through uh, formative assessments, small assignments where students have a good chance of success and they can see the value of the work, uh, and then uh, making clear what the value of the work might, uh, might be. Right, so then that, that brings us to the second uh, uh, challenge, which is student fear and mistrust, which is related to mindset. If students are, are fearful about taking a course uh, or uh, they don't trust that the professor is working towards their, uh, their best interests. So students come into course, some courses uh, not with neutral um, emotions, but actually with negative emotions. They may have had failure experiences before or some sort of negative experience of a course. So they come in uh, already fearful and anxious about a course. And this is, is going to uh, affect their ability and their, uh, to do well in the course. It's going to affect uh, their motivation to do well in the course. Um, and they have to think about whether they can overcome the, uh, this fear and this anxiety about the, the course. Uh, student trust in the teacher, they have to think about whether the teacher is, is a competent teacher, if the teacher is fair, uh, and uh, if the teacher uh, is going to be helpful uh, to the students and in, in being successful. All right, let's talk about trust a little bit more because that's 
uh, a topic that actually hasn't gotten a lot of attention uh, in the research literature. Uh, student trust comes into play uh, when students feel uh, uh, vulnerable, when they feel like there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether they will do well or not. So the greater the fear and anxiety and stress that a student is experiencing, the more important student trust in the teacher uh, is. So uh, math anxiety is very well uh, established as, as a major source of, of, uh, of challenge for a lot of students. So uh, for a particular course where the students have a lot of anxiety, then that student trust in the t their particular teacher is, is really, really important. So the students, um, student trust is the student's willingness to risk vulnerability, pursue challenging work, take on challenging work, do the belief the teacher is competent, will demonstrate integrity and will act in ways that are beneficial to uh, the student in terms of their learning and development. So we break this down into three components, competence, the teacher uh, is knowledgeable about their field. The teacher is a, is a skilled teacher. They know how to present information clearly, uh, design uh, activities that are helpful. Uh, the teacher has integrity, which means the teacher uh, is truthful, keeps their word, they're conscientious. Uh, when they make a promise, they keep it. They're fair, they don't play favorites. They're not biased. Uh, against uh, certain people, and they're respectful. They treat people as, uh, you know, with respect and, and dignity. Now, notice the, the operative word here is fair, not necessarily equal. Um, uh, faculty who are trusted um, tend to be uh, flexible, but, but fair, as opposed to simply uh, addressing the same, uh, you know, treating everyone exactly the same. They recognize that people have different challenges and different uh, um, uh, you know, there are different uh, challenges in their in their life. So they take that into account, whether someone may have had a death in the family or or something along those uh, those lines. Then uh, the last one is beneficence, where uh, the student believes the teacher is working to uh, promote and enhance student learning and, and development. Beneficence is an extremely important part of, of student trust uh, in the teacher. If you have all three of those, then uh, you have uh, a high level of student trust. So how do we deal with fear, anxiety, and mistrust? Uh, one uh, approach that's shown a lot of promise is something called cognitive reappraisal. And there will be a reference uh, for this uh, in the resource area. In cognitive reappraisal, students uh, take their stress and their anxiety and they reappraise it as a way of, uh, in a positive light. Uh, it gives them energy to do better. It helps them to focus. It helps them to, um, uh, to, uh, you know, go the extra mile on, on exams. So instead of thinking of it as something that's negative, we reappraise it as something positive. And there's uh, research which shows that interventions of cognitive reappraisal can actually help uh, first year students to do better. Um, we can build self-efficacy through uh, formative assessments, and uh, then uh, we can uh, engage in wise feedback uh, to uh, improve trust. So let's talk about wise feedback uh, for a second here. Imagine you're in a course and you make an F on a paper, right? Now, there are two ways that the, the professor can uh, present this, uh, this uh, failing grade. First, you can just write an F and say, please see me. Or alternatively, uh, and this is in, uh, uh, from Anderton, uh, this kind of message your paper contains a number of errors, but they're easily correctable. I can see you're using some inefficient strategies. You come by my office hours, we can go over it, and I think uh, I can really help you with this. Okay, now, you know, given these two messages, which of them is going to build trust? Which of them is going to be more likely where that student is actually going to come in and see you? It's obviously the one uh, on, the, uh, on the right. That's an example of what Jaeger calls wise feedback, uh, which says, uh, the feedback says, I'm holding the class to high standards. It's not like I'm holding you to an individual standard. I'm holding the whole class to this high standard. I believe you have the ability to reach these standards and uh, I will provide you with the help that you need. This is what wise feedback is all about. And Jaeger shows that wise feedback interventions can actually uh, improve trust, especially uh, among at-risk populations. All right, so here are a number of resources to help you um, uh, learn more about student fear and mistrust um, and how uh, we can deal with them. The PERTS uh, uh, resource page uh, talks about a lot about mindsets. 
Um, here's an interview with Rebecca Cox, who wrote a book called The College Fear Factor, which is a case study in how fear and anxiety and mistrust can actually interfere uh, with student learning. Uh, and then uh, a couple of other resources uh, uh, for you. And then finally, uh, here are some discussion questions that you can uh, discuss with your colleagues and talk about uh, how you see uh, student fear and mistrust and how you see mindsets playing out in your classroom and how you deal with those, those challenges. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you on the next video.